in today's video we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern we do have multiple larger storms mostly across the central states impacting some of the western states and obviously some of the eastern states but the highlight here will be over the middle of the nation with most of them struggling to reach the eastern seaboard and this is going to be the theme here for at least a little bit so we'll talk about that uh, among other things obviously as we go along keep in mind that we are going to be taking a look at the storm prediction center outlook at the end of this video where there will be a lot of information revealed obviously um, as there is multiple days of pretty major severe weather anticipated let's take it towards tomorrow afternoon and that's going to be for saturday on april 27th we see a 996 down here for kansas and oklahoma 1001 left over here near the great lakes there uh, and we see overall quite a bit of precipitation in between these two areas of lower pressure uh, and this is going to be really the main driving force here for the next couple of days we see some snowfall here across many of the rocky states like montana idaho wyoming utah colorado new mexico and arizona now that i come to think of it that's pretty much all the rocky states uh, we do have severe weather here on the eastern end of things so keep that in mind for kansas oklahoma Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri. We expect at least three days of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back severe weather for this region. It's really going to stay pretty stagnant, and it's going to be pretty slow to move out, so keep that all in mind. By the time we reach Sunday here on April 28th, we see a 989 now located over northern Iowa with a cold front stretching underneath, warm front out to the east here. And what we see overall is plenty of warmth and humidity building through the eastern states with cooler, drier air trying to wrap behind this low. If you've kept up with the channel, you would know that this is really common and pretty much the, the dynamics to most every low. But I like to point it out uh, just so that you guys can learn as we just move along every single time. Now, as we reach towards Monday... You can see this cold front boundary is slowly inching eastward. It's still over kind of the more central states, but I would say deeper south areas like Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky here is the main areas we're watching by this point. Also, by this point, the low has weakened significantly. It's only 1,001 now, uh, so we're really seeing everything kind of weakened down. We are seeing some snowfall up here for the northwest, primarily Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, as well as a bit of Wyoming there that could be heavier in spots but of course it's going to be especially prevalent over uh, the higher elevation areas so keep that in mind by the time we reach tuesday here on april 30th uh, by the afternoon we do see that there is a 996 over north dakota this one in particular doesn't really have that cold front warm front dynamic going so I don't anticipate too much in terms of severe weather. Don't hold me to that. But this corridor here could get interesting for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Uh, but I'm not seeing as much dynamics here at play as we typically see with a lot of these lows. Uh, there is plenty of activity along the Gulf and East Coast states here. But again, uh, not a whole lot to work with as far as dynamics. So that shouldn't be anything too major. By Wednesday on May 1st here, what we're seeing is a 9, uh, let's see, 998 here in between Colorado and New Mexico with some thunderstorms flaring up to the east of this as we obviously get this lift from the Gulf of Mexico. This is going to obviously play a role. We do see some sinking cold air behind all of it, causing some snowfall for Idaho, Montana, Wyoming here. Uh, everything's moving pretty standard here with this low. We see by Thursday here on the 2nd, it dives southward and rapidly uh, not intensifies, but kind of just weakens as it gets down all the way down to 1,002 millibar low pressure center. Again, that's surging humidity and warmth out to the east, flaring up these thunderstorms for the south central states. Also, some snowfall here for Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado really, really prevailing. By the time we reach Friday on May 3rd, what we see is that there is plenty of precipitation up and down. Again, the Gulf states and up into the uh, Ohio Valley and even into the northeast here. So keep in mind that there could be some thunderstorm activity here for later on next week or about a week from today, better yet. Um, and that could cause, obviously, some impacts. By the time we're reaching Saturday afternoon on the 4th, we do have a little bit more to work with as we have 1,002 popping up here for northern New York. Cold front dragging behind, warm front somewhere offshore there. So we do see the warmer, dry, warmer, more humid air, better yet, really prevailing here. 
here east of that cold front with colder, drier air really, really moving in behind this area of thunderstorm activity along that cold front boundary. Overall, out west, things are a lot quieter as we don't have any major lows at play. We do see 1,002 here by Sunday, May 5th really, really causing some thunderstorms to flare up across Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas here has a little bit of a warm front look up there to the north, although this cold air is really pushing southward on it. So it could be a stationary front uh, by this point. Honestly, this system in particular does have some interesting dynamics to it, I would say. And by Monday, it really, really weakens. We do have thunderstorms and showers around for areas in the Midwest, South Central Plains, deeper south, and even the Ohio Valley, uh, but not a lot to work with this as far as thunderstorms or you know cold fronts warm fronts low pressure systems none of that really going on by this point now as we move on and take a look here at the total precipitation it's no surprise that the eastern seaboard especially the southeast here but some of the northeast as well is a lot quieter um, than what we're seeing and honestly non-existent for a lot of the southeast as we compare it to the central states and even up into the ohio valley here Great Lakes, interior northeast, south central and deeper south, uh, northern plains and midwest, central plains here. All of these areas are prevailing with far above average precipitation here. So certainly all of our activity, well, I wouldn't say all of it literally, but a vast majority of the activity will be over this area is what seems to be evident. Uh, the northwest here, so starting in Washington, Oregon, uh, Idaho, Montana, down through the Rockies basically here, a lot of this will be snowfall, but we do see plenty of activity in this area as well, just not quite as extreme as those central areas are seeing. Now, for the temperature pattern, what we see here is an overall flip-floppy pattern. We get warmth here for the majority of this upcoming week in the east. Uh, and this is really reinforced by this colder air mass that is staying put over the west. So this really encourages this warmth to uh, basically rebound in the east. But by this point on Thursday the 2nd, we do have signs of warming for the west coast, uh, which is typically going to expand eastward. So take up a majority here of your western states and then force this colder air to move eastward, which is what keeps the pattern revolving. So this is what I expect to see transpire here. Let's see what happens, though. Um, and sure enough, that warmth is building. Uh, the cold air is centered over the central states here, but this warmth is really putting up a good fight there in the east. But we can see this warmth in the west has really anchored itself in further. Let's see what happens here. That's Sunday the 5th. And yeah, we do eventually see that cold air reach the east coast by the 7th. Uh, but again, just like a revolving door, we see cold air now building for the West Coast, which should encourage it to basically continue to spread eastward and take over most of the West, which should encourage this east, this uh, warmth to move eastward. And again, revolving door pattern is, is what I would call this. So let's see what happens. And sure enough, the warmth builds into the east. Oh, another cool down as we see warm air build back into the West. So that's only the next 15 days. We probably saw the temperature pattern change like five or six times right there. So yes, a very, very flip floppy pattern to say the least. Let's take a look at the Storm Prediction Center for day one. This will be today on Friday through Saturday morning at about 6 a.m. on the 27th. We see general thunderstorm risk areas here in the lighter greens. Your darker green there is the marginal risk. So that's your level one risk. We do expect isolated severe weather to be possible. The yellow area being the slight risk area where it becomes a little bit more scattered about. Your uh, orange area there is your enhanced risk or level three, and we expect a little bit more widespread severe weather for those areas. So for uh, states like Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and down through Texas, definitely a little bit more widespread severe weather could be possible. Day two, which will be for Saturday through Sunday morning, uh, 27th through 28th. It's a lot of the same here. I would break it down, but I mean, what really is that different here? We have the same levels, very similar regions. Uh, just be sure to pinpoint your exact location and see which risk level you're in. I also encourage you to definitely take a look at what the Storm Prediction Center themselves are saying and the National Weather Service always. It's never a bad idea. Uh, and then by day three, which will be Sunday the 28th into the morning of Monday the 29th, we see very similar areas, although we only have a level two here, slight risk, which don't get it twisted. Uh, here in Southeast Virginia, we did have a cat or a <laughs> category. My sleep has been off, guys. An EF3 tornado uh, on a slight risk day, which is obviously a very major tornado. It destroyed some homes, destroyed some lives potentially. Um, so very major things can happen on these not so major seeming 
outlooks and days. So keep that in mind. And it's always important to be alert no matter what, because the weather is very, very unpredictable. But again, we have the general thunderstorm risk area in the lighter green, darker green marginal area, and then that level two slight risk area. But this is all the way by Sunday. We could see an upgrade or downgrade uh, here. So definitely stay tuned and, and uh, stay tuned to the Storm Prediction Center as well to see what their updates are through all of this. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.